It's, it's my pleasure to introduce uh, the next speaker, Adrian Langer. As you may have noticed, uh, the program committee made sure that the names of the Polish uh, plenary speakers are easy to pronounce to, for our German guests. Uh, well, Adrian was born about 40 years ago, and for the last 20 years he is uh, attached uh, to the University of Warsaw, from first as an undergraduate student and now as a, as a professor. Also, since his early mathematical childhood, he, he is in, interested in, in algebraic geometry, passing gradually for, from characteristic zero to characteristic uh, to, to characteristic uh, P. <laughs> uh, pardon? Initially it was 41. 42. Okay. Uh, well, uh, this, he traveled a lot, visited several institutions, also in, in, in Germany, Max Planck uh, Institute, University in Duisburg, Essen. Also, uh, he got a prestigious Wilhelm Bessel Award from the Humboldt Foundation. His best-known paper was published about 10 years ago in the Annals, and it's devoted to semi-stable shifts in positive uh, characteristic. And the referee, uh, uh, there's a feature, uh, featured uh, refer uh, report, review in, 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 in the mathematical reviews, and, and the reviewer wrote, this is a fantastic paper. So now we are looking for a fantastic talk on inequalities between churn classes of vector bundles and their applications. So, Thank you. Um, so first of all, I would like to thank the organizers for, for giving me a, the opportunity to talk here. And obviously, I'm very honored to talk at this meeting between German and Polish mathematical societies. Uh, so the title already managed to scare quite a lot of people from, this, uh, from the audience, and that was actually on purpose. Uh, but at least at the beginning, I'm not going to tell much about churn classes. So what I want to start with is, well, arrangements of lines, so really elementary geometry. Then there will be some elementary geometry that I called non-elementary geometry, meaning that statements are elementary, but proofs not really. And then I will talk uh, how to actually prove these things uh, using churn classes. First, uh, I will talk about complex varieties, and most of my talks will be really complex, uh, but some of it will be in positive characteristic. So, that's more or less the plan of the talk, and I will try to go on. So, arrangements of lines. So, the first thing is uh, that uh, I think that everyone of you can prove very easily is the following uh, theorem that goes back to 19th century. It was a problem posed by Sylvester and then uh, again by Erdes in early 40s, and that was solved by not Galley, I think that it was solved by uh, Melchior. Anyway, the, the name of the theorem is Sylvester Galley. Uh, so the, the theorem says that if you have some number of, plane, uh, of lines, well, sorry, some number of points where either all these points lie on one line and there exists a line which contains exactly two of these points. So, so at some point when you stop uh, listening to my talk, you can think how to prove this theorem, and it will take you about five minutes to do that. Uh, but uh, you can also think about the dual version. So this is really Euclidean plane. The dual version is, uh, well, now I will really talk about line arrangements. So I have some number of lines in the projective plane over real numbers, but you can still think about uh, just, well, uh, the usual Euclidean plane, and the, the theorem says that if not all the lines pass through one point, then there exists a point belonging to exactly two lines. So uh, that's the beginning of the story, and now the definition of a line arrangement. Uh, right? A line arrangement will be, well, some number of lines in the projective plane 
which is defined over some field. So the predictive plane means uh, that it's really just the usual plane with some points added at infinity, so that you, well, it, any two parallel lines intersect at one point. That's a very bad definition, I know, but uh, that's what you should think about. So by TM, I will denote the number of points belonging to exactly M lines. Uh, obviously, M should be at least two, because for one, there is nothing interesting. And now, if the field is a real uh, field, then the sylvester galley uh, theorem can be reformulated just by saying that if you have arrangement of k lines and there is tk equals zero means that there is no point belonging to exactly k lines, then this implies that uh, the, there are some points belonging to exactly two lines, so t2 is greater than zero. So, so that's easy, but more difficult is Dirac's conjecture that goes back to 1951. So this says that if there are no uh, points belonging to exactly k lines, that there are s the number of points belonging to exactly two lines is greater than half of the number of all the lines. And this conjecture is actually still open. Uh, although, I mean, I don't want to say that it's very important conjecture, but there are some uh, people that are interested in this conjecture, like Green and Tao, who managed to prove uh, last year uh, that if k is large enough, then this conjecture is true. Okay, but here everything is over real lines, uh, or over real numbers, and one can ask what happens uh, over other fields. And that's, uh, well, not so good. The news is that even if you pass to complex numbers, then uh, this theorem does not hold anymore. So I stole a picture of Hesse configuration from uh, David Epstein's gallery. And uh, this, in this co configuration, you see nine lines. Uh, well, these lines, they are stra straight lines. I mean, maybe you can't quite see that they are very straight because uh, on the real plane, uh, it's not possible to draw such a thing. But you see that now there are exactly nine points of intersection uh, for this line arrangement, and there are uh, 13, uh, sorry, 12, uh, no, sorry, there are nine lines, and to, uh, the number of points belonging to exactly three lines is equal to 12. Um, maybe that's not... This is dual. Well, actually, I wrote, uh, draw the dual thing, sorry. But, yeah, but that's how it works. Uh, so, when there, also you see that the number, uh, well, that not all the lines pass through one point, uh, there are no points belonging to exactly two lines. So this uh, configuration can be actually obtained uh, by considering uh, three torsion points on an elliptic curve. Uh, so what, and there are, well, some other line configurations re related to reflection groups, and they lead to some line arrangements that contain three N lines, where exactly N squared, uh, triple points and three points uh, of multiplicity n. So actually this A033 that, I, uh, that is here, it is a special case of this one when n is equal to three, except that t3 is equal to nine and tn is equal to three, so the sum is 12. That's uh, the explanation of 12 here. But it also can be constructed using uh, reflection groups. So what happens over complex numbers is that although you can't get the inequality for T2, there are some other inequalities if you assume something uh, slightly stronger. So we, now we assume that the number of points belonging to at least uh, K minus two lines is equal to zero. And then Hirtzebuch in 1986 uh, managed to prove that the number of double and triple points is bounded by the number of lines plus some uh, non-negative number depending on the number of uh, the rest of the points. Uh, 
So the theorem that I started with, this Sylvester Galley uh, theorem, it was really a combinatorial theorem. And Dirac's conjecture, it's really a combinatorial problem. But this one uh, is really non-elementary. So, uh, so Sylvester Galley theorem, as I said, uh, well, anyone can prove. And I remember that uh, when I was a high school student, uh, there was one of the exercises in old Olympiads that was exactly prove, uh, saying that one should prove this theorem. So, uh, <coughs> so it was really elementary. Whereas this one uh, does not have any elementary proof till now. And uh, yeah, so the only proof goes through some inequalities for chain numbers. So I will also state another slightly different inequality that I proved many years later using yet different techniques. So this says that if there are no large pencils of lines passing through one point, then uh, there are quite good bounds for the number of all the, uh, all the multiple points of this line arrangement. So for example, equality holds for all the line arrangements that are coming from these reflection groups that I mentioned. Uh, so in Hirschebusch inequality, e equality holds uh, for just a zero three three, whereas this inequality, I don't want to say that it's better because there are stronger assumptions, but yeah, but equality can hold in lots of cases. Hirschebusch inequality, it's quite difficult to actually construct any examples for which equality holds. Um, okay, so that's Hirschebusch inequality, and now I can stop talking about arrangement of lines. Well, this might be a fascinating topic, but uh, yeah. Now again, we pass to another field. Unfortunately, both Sylvester Galley uh, and Hirschebusch's theorem fail in positive characteristic. So now if you take all the possible lines in the plane defined over a finite field, then the number of the lines is equal to p squared plus p plus 1. The number of uh, there is exactly p plus 1 uh, lines passing through every point, and the number, uh, yeah, so t p plus 1 is equal to p squared plus p plus 1, and the rest of uh, multiple points is equal to zero. So I draw one uh, special uh, line arrangement, uh, which is FANO plane. Uh, so this plane in characteristic two. So there are, as you can see, there are exactly seven lines. And unfortunately, both uh, Sylvester Galley and Hirschebusch's theorem fail in this case. Uh, so. Now I can go to train classes. So, we, well, that's a short recollection. I'm not going to say what train class really is, if you don't know that. It's just some invariant of a vector bundle. So, if we have a holomorphic vector bundle, as I prefer, well, now topologists can uh, complain that I did so strong assumption, but I will not be interested in any other bundles apart from bundles that have some nice structure, like holomorphic structure on, on the, in the complex case. So in this case, uh, the churn classes are just some invariants uh, of a vector bundle that live in uh, cohomology groups. So uh, in particular, i've churn class lives in uh, two i've cohomology group. And they are very useful in, uh, for many reasons. One of the reasons is that uh, if you have any manifold, then you can attach to this manifold uh, invar some invariants depending only on the manifold. And these are chain classes of the tangent bundle. But now I really think about holomorphic tangent bundle of the manifold. Uh, so that's the beginning. And in positive characteristic, everything works in the same way. Roughly speaking, uh, there are some small troubles as for the cohomology groups, but they live somewhere and they behave in the same way. So they live, for, for me, they live in Chow group rather. Uh, but m one might think also about cohomology group, but with slightly different coefficients than that. Okay, so 
the first thing that one should know, and one knows from uh, basic differential geometry course, uh, is that the first turn class of a complex uh, uh, Riemann surface with exactly G handles can be computed using Gauss curvature as some integral. And that's actually the topological Euler characteristic of uh, the surface. So that it's computed by as 2 minus 2G, where G is the called genus, that's the number of these handles uh, that you need to attach to a sphere. So that's what happens in dimension one, and there is a similar formula in n dimensions. So now if you have a protective manifold of dimension d, uh, well, by per you can think that protective really means that it's compact, uh, but it's half truth. Okay. Uh, anyway, the, now the topological Euler characteristic can be computed as the top turn class of the tangent bundle. And uh, that, yeah, the topological Euler characteristic, I just gave the definition with the alternating sum of dimensions of the cohomology groups over real or co complex numbers. It doesn't really matter. Okay, so in the curve case, one can easily see that uh, if the curve is not a rational curve, it, I mean, it's not a sphere, then uh, the topological Euler characteristic is always lesser or equal than zero. That's what this Gauss bonnet uh, theorem gives uh, very easily. And one can wonder whether there are similar kind of uh, abstractions on the topological Euler characteristic in higher dimensions. And actually, there are. So the most important is the following theorem that uh, is a theorem about complex surfaces. So if you have a smooth complex surface and if this surface is not ruled by lines, I mean there is no vibrations, we, vibration uh, of the surface over a curve with fibers that are lines, then actually the topological order characteristic uh, is greater or equal than uh, the first chain class squared divided by three. So this theorem, well, if it was first proven uh, with a weaker constant uh, by Bogomolov, so he proved that four times the second chain class is greater or equal than the first chain class squared, but uh, a year later, Miaoka managed to uh, prove uh, using algebraic methods this inequality, and this inequality is optimal. So Yao used completely different methods that, uh, in the same year uh, that go to analytic geometry, complex geometry, and, uh, and he managed to actually say where we have equality. So equality. Uh, in this inequality holds exactly if uh, x is a ball quotient. So, yeah, equality holds for ball quotients, and uh, Hirzebu uh, constructed some uh, ball quotients in this way uh, by taking uh, Kummer's coverings of the projective plane, which are branched along. Uh, this line arrangement that I draw here and taking resolution of singularities. So that's actually very much related to this inequality that I started with because this line arrangement that is drawn here uh, is satisfies equality in Hirzebruch's inequality. And the method of proving of Hirzebruch's inequality was exactly like that. We take some line arrangement, we pass to some covering branched along this line arrangement, and when we take resolution of singularities and apply this bogomolov miyaoka yao inequality. So that's the complex uh, case. And now I will uh, yeah, go back to the same paper of Bogomolov in which he proved this weak version of bogomolov miyaoka yao inequality. So the way he did that was the following. If you have a vector bundle on a complex uh, projective surface, and if you have, if it is semi-stable, meaning that 
yes, now I am in trouble. Uh, but uh, I remember that yesterday uh, when there was uh, some uh, at one of the talks, there was also a notion of stability, and the speaker didn't say anything about what it really is. So I, hopefully, I can also avoid that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But semi-stability is essentially stability. Yeah, it's uh, it's very similar thing. Okay. <clears throat> I could put stable, and it wouldn't change anything. The theorem would be equivalent. So if you perturb semi-stable, it's still semi-stable. Well, that's that's the same. <coughs> But uh, it has also some nice interpretation uh, in uh, complex geometry that I will talk about at some point. It is equivalent to existence some special metrics on, uh, on a vector bundle. So in this case, uh, you, if you have a semi-stable vector bundle, then uh, we have inequality for the discriminant of this vector bundle. So the discriminant is defined in uh, exactly by this, by this formula. But here it's two times the rank of the vector bundle times the second turn class minus rank minus one uh, and the first turn class of the vector bundle squared. So uh, this is slightly cheating, obviously, because Turn classes, as you remember, they were some classes in cohomology groups, and now I talk about numbers. So I should rather take integrals, but since the, this uh, discriminant lives in the fourth cohomology group, uh, which is isomorphic to, uh, to Z, I really take just, uh, yeah, I can really talk about this inequality. So I, I in the surface case, I always think about churn classes as numbers. So it was proven uh, later using yeah completely different method. So Bogomolov's method was completely algebraic, but there is a theorem which goes back to Narasimhan and Shadri in the curve case. Then it was proven by Donaldson in the surface case, Ullenbeck Yao in the color case and in higher dimensions and Donaldson also in the same case uh, time uh, did that in higher dimensions in the projective case. So the theorem says that a stable vector bundle on a complex projective manifold has a special metric that's called Hermitian Young metric and once we have this kind of metric it's a really simple computation to see that uh, we get this inequality. Uh, but this proof is really completely different to, to Bogomolov's that was completely algebraic and didn't have anything to do with, with metrics on vector bundles. Uh, yeah, now positive characteristic story. So the positive characteristic story began uh, essentially in 1978 there was a paper due to Michel Reynaud who gave some counterexamples to Kodaira's vanishing theorem in positive characteristics. So that means that if we have a smooth projective, uh, well, that there he, he really constructed some smooth projective surface and a hyperplane section, roughly speaking, that I call H, such that if you look at the first cohomology group associated to this, uh, to the dual of this hyperplane uh, section, then uh, it is non-zero. So using this one, one can easily see that this Bogomolov's inequality fails in positive characteristics. So, so this cohomology class gives rise to some extension of uh, line bundle associated to the hyperplane by the trivial line bundle. And this, uh, in this case, this is uh, an easy exercise to see that uh, that this bundle is, uh, bundle is semi-stable, but uh, the discriminant is negative. So, but it is not so bad. I mean, uh, it fails, but not too much uh, in positive characteristics. So the, the, the story is that if you have a smooth predictive uh, variety and a hyperplane, then in positive characteristics, you can raise coordinates to the pith power, and that's what is called the Frobenius morphism. And uh, there is another notion of semi-stability. Now it is strong semi-stability. It means that not only the bundle is semi-stable, but also all the Frobenius pullbacks of this bundle are semi-stable. So it is something 
stronger, and it is actually quite difficult to check whether a vector bundle is strongly semi-stable or not. It's much more difficult than checking semi-stability, but fortunately, in this case, uh, we have this Bogomolov's inequality. Uh, so that's uh, the paper that was uh, mentioned by Stefan Jackowski. Uh, the main result essentially said this one, that if that the strongly semi-stable vector bundle has, uh, for strongly semi-stable vector bundle we have this inequality for the discriminant. So now we have intersection with uh, hyperplane, since the discriminant in higher dimensions it's not, it's really a class in the cohomology group, I need to cut it to uh, to dimension two using hyperplanes, and then uh, this turn class becomes a number. So then this intersection is number, and this the inequality says that this is greater than or equal than zero. So that's uh, this inequality is uh, equivalent to the main result of this paper, and it was used to prove existence of moduli spaces of semi-stable sheaves in mixed characteristic case or in positive characteristic also. But that's positive characteristic and I will forget about this right now uh, in, a, well, maybe not yet. That's the last thing that I wanted to say. It's a theorem that goes back to 1987 of Delini and Tilusi. The, so the theorem says that in positive characteristic, if you have a lifting modulo p squared, uh, then uh, if you have a hyperplane section, then its cohomology uh, vanish uh, for if i is less when, than the dimension. So this was actually used to prove uh, Kodaira's vanishing theorem in characteristic zero. So the, the only known proofs of Kodaira's vanishing theorem, which is the same kind of vanishing theorem in the case of complex uh, productive variety, was proven by Kodaira. And for a long time there was no algebraic proof. The first one goes back slightly earlier to Faltings, but uh, the linear intelligence really made uh, this uh, much simpler and cleaner. So you, so you see that although uh, this Kodaira's vanishing fails in positive characteristic, it still doesn't fail too much. If you assume that you can lift it slightly, so the coefficients of your variety are not only in, uh, in fp, but actually in z divided by p squared z, then, then actually everything works in the same way, and one can uh, ask whether Bogomolov's inequality is also true under uh, the same assumptions. Uh, so, so before answering this question, I need to go back to complex geometry. So uh, the complex geometry and Higgs bundles. So if I have some protective complex protective manifold, then a Higgs bundle, it's not only a bundle, but also something that is called a Higgs field, uh, which is a homomorphism, uh, well, a map of vector bundles, from the vector bundle to a vector bundle twisted by uh, the cotangent bundle. And this must satisfy uh, some integrability condition that's the same as for uh, flat connections. Uh, so that's theta, which theta is zero. And in this case, uh, there is a theorem that uh, goes back in the curve case to Hitchin uh, in 1987, and then a year later it was proven in all the dimensions by Simpson. Uh, saying that we have an analog of this theorem of Narasimhan, Seshadri, Donald, Donaldson, Ullenbeck, and Yao. Uh, so now uh, every stable Higgs bundle has a Hermitian Young Mills metric. So you can think that it is some special metric that is very useful just because you can, for example, get inequalities for chain classes. So that's uh, what Simpson did. He proved that if you have a semi-stable Higgs bundle, 
well, actually he proved that if you have a stable Higgs bundle, then the discriminant is greater or equal than zero. But as I said, semi-stability, in the semi-stable case, you have the same and it's easy to, it easily follows from the stable case. Uh, so now we simply added some decoration to a vector bundle. We assume much less, actually, because semi-stability for Higgs bundles, it's much weaker notion than just for vector bundles, and we still get the same inequality. So, so this inequality, is, it is quite amazing, because uh, the only proof that was known for many years was using exactly these uh, complex methods and uh, differential geometry. It went through this Hamiltonian Young Mills metric, and it was not clear how to prove that uh, using algebraic methods. Uh, so Bogomolov's method completely failed to prove anything in this case. Uh, when I was visit visiting ICTP for uh, as a postdoc in 1999, I, at the time uh, Professor uh, Narasimhan was. Uh, director of uh, the mathematical section of ICTP, and he asked me the question how to prove this algebraically. And unfortunately, at that time, uh, the only thing I was able to prove well, actually, he was giving this problem to everyone he, he met. So there was another postdoc at the same time, uh, well, slightly earlier, who did the rank two case. I managed to do the rank three case, but the rest uh, somehow uh, stayed open for. Uh, and no one knew how to do that. So, see, so really, importance of these uh, inequalities and uh, Hermitian Young Mills metrics uh, also comes from the relation with Riemann Hilbert correspondence and, uh, and the correspondence between uh, various uh, objects that are well known in topology. So, if you have a smooth complex projective variety, then uh, what Simpson proved is that vector bundles with flat connections, so these are holomorphic vector bundles with flat connections on a smooth uh, complex variety, they are uh, in one-to-one -one correspondence with semi-stable Higgs bundles with vanishing turn classes. And uh, they also correspond to representations of the fundamental group. Also holomorphic, but actually you don't need that. I mean, you don't need real. You can think about differential uh, vector bundles and differential connections. It's the same thing. Yes. Yeah. 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 I didn't say that this is deep. Uh, the, the first. No. 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 Sorry. The, the, the equivalence of between representations of. Uh, Topological fundamental group and local systems and vector bands with uh, flat connections, that is, uh, uh, that is a well known story. Uh, if you think about holomorphic vector bands and holomorphic flat connections, then I believe it goes back to Delini, but it is at least 40 years old. Yeah, so as you see, very old. <coughs> so, uh, yeah, so that's a Simpson correspondence in characteristic zero case. And in positive characteristic, uh, well, the, in positive characteristic, you can't hope for the same thing, but there is some kind of correspondence, except that now I need to, to, to change objects a bit. So where uh, now I will denote by this Hick p minus one of x, I mean, that's slightly technical, but uh, that will be the category of Higgs modules such that the Higgs field is nilpotent and satisfies this uh, condition that if we take p power, then it is equal to zero. So, uh, so this is really related to variations of Hodge structure in the characteristic zero case. And you can think about this also in positive characteristic, but this is related to some Hodge theory, theory and variations of Hodge structure in positive characteristic. But to make it more precise, in the characteristic zero pay, uh, case, to have 
interesting variations of Hodge structures, one also uses a notion of polarization, and in positive characteristic, one can't hope to get anything like that in the same way. So I will try to explain this a bit later how you go around this problem. So that's one category that is interesting for us. Another one is the category of uh, vector bundles with uh, flat connections. So now there is another slightly uh, slight twist in the positive characteristic. So there is a notion of peak curvature. Not, so flat connections means that curvature is equal to zero. In positive characteristic, uh, you have a notion of peak curvature, and this must be nilpotent. It is not so much interested. You, you can think that this is some subcategory of uh, the category of uh, modules with integrable connections that is really uh, interesting and related to Higgs bundles. And, and the relation was proven a couple of years ago by August and Vologotsky. Uh, so they proved that if you have a smooth a uh, variety with a lifting modulo p squared, then uh, there is equivalence of these categories of modules with integrable connections and Higgs bundles. So this is somehow uh, similar to the characteristic zero case, except that there is no semi-stability notion. And, uh, and this is really for all modules. So it is not quite clear how it is uh, related at least it wasn't clear to me how this is related to Simpson's correspondence that uh, we managed, uh, well, that I managed to talk about earlier. But it is very much related to this Delini and Tulusi theorem, and uh, methods of August and Vologotsky uh, somehow go back to, to this old paper slightly. So, so in particular, uh, this Delini and Tulusi uh, theorem, it really follows from, from this result. Okay, so now the positive characteristic story. Uh, maybe, yeah, maybe I will say just for a second. In the complex case, there are some Young Mills flows, uh, and uh, we want to have something similar in positive characteristic. So the, the idea is that if you have a Higgs bundle, then you can apply this inverse Cartier transform coming from August and Vologotsky, then you need to work a bit to somehow deform it to a, uh, to a Higgs bundle, and then you again perform uh, this uh, Cartier dual and so on. This sequence goes to infinity, so there is some kind of flow. And this, so this idea goes back to Lan, Sheng, and Tsuo, who conjectured that every semi-stable Higgs uh, module has uh, some Higgs Delam flow. So, uh, so I, uh, so this conjecture I proved at some point, and then it was also proven by Lan, Sheng, Yang, and Tsuo using completely different methods. Uh, so you see that now we can have something like Hodge theory in positive characteristic. I will not explain why this is uh, uh, so much analog of what happens in characteristic zero, but it is, for example, related to Fontaine modules over the V-ring, uh, that's Lan, Sheng, and Tsuo, and Lan, Shen, Yang, and Tsuo have some applications to periodic uniformization of open curves, for example. So, so this kind of, uh, of results that I'm talking about are very much related to uniformization problem, like uh, this bogomolov miyao inequality. Equality holds exactly when you can uniformize using the ball. So, so one can think uh, about uniformization in, in the periodic world or in positive characteristic, it doesn't make so much sense. So now what happens in the positive characteristic case, uh, so if you have uh, uh, liftability modulo of this P squared, then actually uh, you have Bogomolov's inequality for Hig semi-stable Higgs bundles. Uh, and that's uh, the main result I wanted to talk about today. Uh, so this 
the proof really uses all the ingredients that I talked about. <laughs> so first, August and Vologotsky's correspondence, then this inequality for train classes of strongly semi-stable sheaves, and then this uh, higgs diagram follow. So once you ha combine all these pieces together, then you actually can prove that this Bogomolov's inequality holds in positive characteristic. And the interesting thing is that it also implies the characteristic zero uh, result. So, for example, it gives the algebraic proof of this uh, Simpson's inequality in the characteristic zero case. And now what are the consequences? So the consequences are quite interesting because we, yeah, I need to assume this liftability thing, but uh, in uh, 1989, uh, Shepard, uh, Nick Shepard Baron managed to prove some kind of Bogomolov uh, type inequality. Unfortunately, it worked only in the characteristic two case. And the result that I talked about, it implies better result in every characteristic greater than three. It also recovers the characteristic uh, Shepard Baron's result, but with the same constant, whereas in uh, uh, in higher characteristic, you have really the same inequality, so with the same constants as in characteristic zero. Obviously, this also implies the characteristic zero story, but uh, but this w this result was conjectured by Shepard Baron at the same paper. Uh, his methods were really completely different, uh, having nothing to do with this kind of hot theoretic thing. And it really had to wait a bit. Uh, so there is also a logarithmic version of the same st story. I'm not going to t talk about this much, but if you have a normal crossing divisor on a smooth projective variety, then uh, if you have a Higgs bundle, which is now logarithmic, and can have logarithmic poles along this normal crossing divisor, then the same inequality holds. But that, again, had to wait quite a bit, uh, even from uh, the Simpsons' time, uh, because that was proven uh, by uh, Takuro Mochizuki yeah, eight years ago. Use, and the proof uses, again, this hermitian yang mills metric, and it's really very complicated. And very long. Um, and obviously, the best. It's not the Mochizuki from the ABC. No, no, no. Different. Yeah. This characteristic zero. Yes. This is the characteristic complex projective varieties. But the same. Uh, it's. Uh, well, there are two Mochizukis, but uh, another Mochizuki appeared before uh, when uh, talking about periodic uniformization problem. I didn't mention, but, but Shinichi Mochizuki appeared at, the, at that time. Now it's Takuro Mochizuki. <coughs> so uh, the same result in the logarithmic case works also in positive characteristic, but now with these liftability properties. So, so maybe I will not talk about that too much. Uh, it is quite similar, but it has some, uh, yeah, it obviously implies the characteristic zero case, and it has some funny consequences about line arrangements in positive characteristic. So if you look at this line arrangement uh, that I started with in positive characteristic, so take all the lines in the projective plane defined over a finite field, then uh, you cannot lift it modulo p squared if you take too many, uh, too many lines. That's what the result is. If you take slightly less lines, then you can actually do that. And this uh, line arrangement A0, 3P, uh, it consisted of 3P lines, and it lifts to actually characteristic zero. But, but now if you have slightly more lines, then you cannot lift it even modulo P squared. Uh, so this, yeah, this might be considered as a funny application in uh, in uh, positive characteristic. It's especially funny because it contradicts quite a lot of papers of other people. But uh, <coughs> that's another story. So what should we do now? Well, one of the things is. Uh, uh, Bogomolov's inequality is essentially dimension two thing, so what happens in higher dimensions? And there are some very interesting uh, ideas about what happens in higher dimensions. 
So we have some inequalities uh, for higher turn classes, and these are still conjectural things in the characteristic zero case. So there are some <coughs> similar inequalities as uh, with Bogomolov's inequality in uh, taking account the higher turn classes, but now not for the semi stable bundles, but rather for some objects in the derived category of coherent sheaves. Uh, that's uh, much more complicated, but it has very interesting uh, applications. And in the known cases where they were actually able to prove that, it implied uh, some constructions of bridge land stability conditions on some three folds. It's again very uh, well, these results are really very algebra geometric, but they come from physics, uh, this kind of vigilant stability condition. And the actual idea that uh, one should get some inequalities for churn classes goes back to, I believe, paper by Douglas, Reinbacher, and Tiao. So we had some conjectures that occurred to be wrong, but it somehow inspired uh, mathematicians to have a look what, at what might be true in positive, uh, sorry, in, uh, in higher dimensions. So, and, so now what are the other problems? Uh, well, one of the problems is the stability of the tangent bundle. That's very much related, and it goes back to the uh, results of uh, Obeon, and Yao, and then later Tsuji uh, somehow relaxed the assumptions a bit. And this says that if you have uh, manifold with a complex projective manifold with negative uh, constant curvature when the tangent bundle is semi-stable. I somehow wildly interpreted the results right now, but, uh, but the proof uses is again color einstein metric. So color einstein metric uh, is essentially equivalent to existence of these hermitian young mills metric on the tangent bundle. So it's, it's again very much related to all the results that I talked about. And uh, Yao actually got the Fields Medal for, uh, uh, for proving that uh, the rates with C1 equal to zero are, uh, so uh, have this Kaller Einstein metric, but Kaller Einstein metric implies semi stability. So I somehow decided to state this, uh, this way. I mean, it's not a very good thing to do. So, this was done only because I wanted to say that there are some algebraic methods of proving this Yao's theorem, but there is no algebraic approach to, to the results of Obama, uh, Yao and, and Tsuji. No one really knows how to approach these kind of uh, questions about tangent bundles. So the, the tangent bundle really played a very important role in, in this Miyaoka Yao inequality that I stated before, uh, before and it's uh, clearly very much related to to Higgs bundles. Uh, so now, yeah, some summary. So I just wanted to say that many results, if you have it in characteristic zero, then you can probably prove it in uh, modulo p squared and uh, then go back to characteristic zero. So that's wild thing. Non abelian Hodge theory works in positive characteristic. And some applications, yeah. So one of the things is we, that this kind of result uh, should be useful in uh, periodic uniformization in higher dimensions. So I already mentioned the curve case, which goes back to Shinichi Mo Mochizuki, and uh, that was done using similar methods uh, as the one that I talked about using these higgs diram flows by uh, Shen, uh, uh, Lan, and Tsuo. Luncheon and tour. So that's one thing. Uh, then uh, there is a problem that I said modulo p squared, but one could also allow some smaller affirmation. Unfortunately, one knows that this fails if uh, if one do that uh, without some further. Well, something has to change. So it's not clear how to do that. And there is this conjecture that I uh, mentioned by uh, Macri and Toda, which might be approached by positive characteristic. And what we really want to know are the properties, how to get properties of the tangent bundle uh, using characteristic P. Uh, that's something that is very interesting 
to me. And the last thing is completely wild, analogs of this in, uh, in arithmetic. This is uh, very interesting. It goes back to a very bad idea due to Miyaoka, who at some point claimed the proof of Fermat's last theorem. Uh, he wanted to get his inequality, but using arithmetic. And uh, this had a fatal uh, flaw, but these kind of results are still important in arithmetic. And one might hope that there are still some conjectures that, that say that this kind of thing, thing that I talked about should be true also in the arithmetic world. OK, thank you. Thank you very much for your talk. Well, it's time for well, not many questions or comments. Here you are. So, has this uh, recent work of Chen Donaldson soon on Keller Einstein metrics in uh, uh, Fano case, so solving another Calabi conjecture, has, has this any relation to? Uh, to any of <laughs> so the, the work so it is quite, yeah, yeah 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 so I I understand the question so the, the the point is that yeah there are some papers due to Chen Donaldson and Sun uh, that proved that k stability is equivalent to existence of some metrics again. Uh, yeah, color Einstein metrics, and this has some important implication, uh, applications in algebraic geometry, implying, for example, a stability of the tangent bundle of Fano manifolds if you have k stability. So this is a completely uh, in algebraic word, but uh, and one might hope that uh, one could approach this one, but certainly not this conjecture that you mentioned, because the problem with uh, Kaller Einstein metrics is that it's not preserved under small deformations where some stability of tangent bundle is. So these are really two different problems. Thank you. Well, maybe one more question. Proszę bardzo. So I have the question for this inequality of the churn classes. So can you prove that in each characteristic you have an equality for some surface? Uh, I mean, uh, yeah, yes. That's uh, very easy because you take whatever in characteristic zero and you lift it to positive characteristic. So. <laughs> Thank you. So any more questions? If not, then thank the speaker again.